Hello, my name is Jim Grace. We're here today at the Temptation Restaurant and Bar, one of the island's oldest and most loved by many institutions on Boca Grande. My wife Karen and I owned the Temptation from 1990 to 2014. It was a wonderful time of our lives as it was a great business to have. But we're here today to talk a little bit about the history of the Temptation, the building, and the murals that adorn the uh, walls of the main dining room. The Temptation building was started in around 1939 by Homer Addison, who was a local barber. He had the idea that if he could build a building and put a bar in, that he would get the bulk of the business because if a fella could come and get his hair cut and get a drink, why not come here? But along came World War II and he was called off to the service before the building got finished. Uh, he spent a lot of his time in the service uh, station in California, where his favorite place to go was a nightclub called The Temptation. So when he was released from the service, he came back and said, the heck with being a barber, I'm going to open the bar slash nightclub and call it The Temptation. At that time, uh, you needed to serve food to get a full liquor license, so all he could serve was beer and wine. That business didn't do too well, so he applied for the full liquor license. And after two tries, he got the license. In the meantime, he added on to the building and put in a kitchen because that license required you serve food when you serve liquor. So in 1947, he was able to open with a full liquor license and he changed the name to the Temptation Bar and Grill. It has since evolved to the Temptation Restaurant and Bar putting more emphasis on the restaurant than the bar. A couple on the island uh, by the name of George and Dulcinea Ophelia Payne DuPont Weymouth befriended him. They were quote unquote beach fronters from the DuPont family, obviously, and they enjoyed coming to the temptation. Uh, it seems that Homer Edison was also a hunting guide for them. So they were trying to help him out with his business. However, a lot of their friends wouldn't come here because it was known as a local's place. So Dio, as she was well known, decided to help Homer by doing something with the walls of the main dining room of The Temptation. She was an artist, so she said, I'll paint a mural depicting my friends and, and things on the island like the beach, the golf course, etc and then we'll see if my friends will come. So she would then go to cocktail parties and say to her friends, I've painted your portrait. And they'd say, oh, show me. And she said, you'll have to go to the temptation and look at the walls because that's where your picture is. So they started to come, which really improved the success of the temptation and it became the place to go on the island as it remains today. Now, Let's talk about the murals that adorn the walls of the main dining room, uh, which have remained since the mid-50s with very little change and just some repair work that was required. Okay, here we are at the murals. Let's start at this corner where you see Port Boca Grande. Port Boca Grande was designed and built because the Boca Grande Pass is one of two deep water passes on the west coast of Florida, the other being Tampa. So phosphate, which was mined out of central Florida, was brought out by railroad to Boca Grande Pass, loaded on ocean-going ships, and shipped off to wherever for commercial use. So this is one of the reasons that this was put in the mural. Also, you'll see a tarpon in this mural here because the Boca Grande Pass has become one of the most famous tarpon fishing passes in the world. Let's move on down and see some other things. Now you see people on the beach having fun. Boca Grande enjoys seven plus miles of beautiful beach along the Gulf Coast. Uh, very pristine and uncrowded like many other beaches in Florida. Some of the people on the beach are named like you'll see Mr. Sharp's name. Mr. Sharp was a DuPont. Um, and there's some Mr. Morton. Mr. Morton's name is there. You can see it right here. Uh, so as I said earlier, Dio Weymouth 
put the names of some of her friends on this mural so they could come in and see their picture and identify themselves by the name. So as we move down, oh, let me point out the lighthouse. The lighthouse is, is center island between the village and the south end of the island. Uh, it's called the range light. As we move down, you'll see ah, a lady painting a picture. It's Mrs. Pierpont, another friend of Dio Weymouth. And you'll see a model of the lighthouse, which is at the south end of Boca Grande. Farther down on the mural, you'll see a painting depicting the lighthouse. The lighthouse has been, it was moved a couple of times and has been restored and is now a big tourist attraction on the island. As we move on down, ah, the bridge going over to the golf course for the Gasparilla Inn and people walking and people playing golf. Let's see if we can see who might be playing. Another huge activity in and around Boca Grande is both recreational and commercial fishermen. And here we see some recreational fishermen, whereas a local guide has taken out some folks to do some fishing and they're fishing with poles for one kind of fish and the net would be for mullet, which is a famous fish from the area. And here we see, oh, Sam Joyner, another commercial fisherman on the island and more people fishing and having fun. Down at the end here, you see the depiction of the lighthouse, which is now at the south end of the island, as I mentioned, very famous. Some of the other things on this mural, like the sea grapes and a few of the other items, were added by local artist Patty Middleton just to refresh the painting at one point. And in a couple of storms over the years, water has gotten in and done some damage and those repairs were made. But essentially, the mural is as Dio Weymouth painted it back in the mid 50s. Let's cross over and take a look at another part of the mural. Ah, here we are at the railroad station, which was very popular in Boca Grande for many, many years as several freight trains bringing phosphate and some passenger trains came through on a daily basis. Uh, right here is Mrs. Crowninshield, who came to see the passenger train come in almost daily and all the children, many of the children on the island would gather around her because she would offer them candy and she was always very, very nice to them. And you see some other folks arriving and coming to see the train. It was a big event on Boca Grande. Okay, that completes the mural in the main dining room and now we'll move into the bar. But I do want to point out a couple of tarpon that are hanging on the wall that have been there for many, many years that are the actual fish, which are called skin mounts. Anymore today, when you catch a fish and have it remade, they do a fiberglass replica of it. But this is the real thing. So we'll show you that and let's move into the bar. Some things I'd like to point out there. As we enter the bar, I'd like to point out the shelves, which were the original liquor store of The Temptation when it first opened and was able to sell uh, spirits. Now let's move on down and point out some other things. Okay, as we move down the bar of The Temptation, which is of course a real bar, it's, it's the last old Florida bar on the island and a very, very popular place with not only the local fishermen, but the tourists that come because very few real bars are left around the country these days. But it has evolved over the many, many years uh, with just things as, as events happen. There was no decorating done. Very few changes have occurred. One of the things that was done were these pictures put up depicting a local baseball team made up of local fishermen that then came in and did their drinking here. As we move on down, you'll see a, pain, a painting by a famous local artist, um, I'm a, a barn dollar that's been hanging here for many, many years. And then pictures of people who have worked here over the years and have been regular customers over the years, many of whom unfortunately have passed away and their picture gets put on the wall. So we move on down, see more pictures of the, the baseball team and we come on down to what then became the liquor store 
uh, in later years and was the only liquor store on the island for many, many years. Uh, since then, a new liquor store has opened up next door, which is still part of the temptation. But this pretty much uh, shows you what the bar is all about, a very popular place. Now we're back in the Caribbean room, which uh, got its name fondly from John Montgomery, who uh, worked here for many, many years. John and Jean, his wife, Montgomery, actually ran the dining rooms of The Temptation and did all the cooking. Their family lived upstairs, so they were a very integral part of the business. Uh, back then, the reason that it was named was that the people of color, the blacks that were on the island, lived in an area down at the south end of the island, many of them did, and the houses down there were very colorful. So he thought the idea that this being the only dining room that they could eat in on the island pre-civil rights, it would be appropriate to name it the Caribbean Room, as well as the fact that many of them were of Caribbean descent. So that's how it got its name. In the early 90s, uh, it was decided that we could reuse the dining room as the business grew, so it was opened up again, obviously, to anyone and everyone, and as it remains today. But it was also decided to keep the name the Caribbean Room. As mentioned earlier, a very big part of Boca Grande and, and lifestyle and livelihood was fishing. So here you have a mural done by Patty Middleton of all the boats out during a tarpon tournament. And all these boats, most of these boats, were local fishermen either out on their own or taking paying guests out to catch the famous tarpon. Also, you see the lighthouse at the south end of the island, and part of the mural is uh, the old Port Boca Grand. Uh, the names on here are all very familiar to locals, and it was just thought it'd be nice to show Boca Grand life as it exists even up to today. So today, we've given you just a small glimpse of what the temptation really is. It's long history, uh, the many, many stories that go along with it, how it evolved into what it is today. And really it's changed very little over the years, other than to say it has become an institution on the island. And as I said earlier, loved by many. Uh, all of us who have owned it, and there's only been four owners in the 70 plus years of its existence, have felt that we were just caretakers of the temptation, not owners. The owners are you, the customers, the people who have come here and enjoy it, who feel like when they're here, they're home. So uh, we hope that you come back and continue to enjoy the temptation, and we hope that it will go on as it has for many, many more years. Thank you very much.